So understanding and the water is back. Just look at the weather, absolutely fantastic. Would you believe it? Three weeks ago, too cold for me to get in. Now it's absolutely perfect. So in I'm gonna get, and I'm gonna answer some of the questions that have been sent through to us. But more to the point, you're gonna join me and the man that's normally behind the camera, Steve Coe. He is coming with me on this little journey. We're gonna go through a session together. Look at the challenges that we face. Look at, let's face it, how good we are, how close we get to doing what we think we're doing. If you've seen Carpology testing the pros, you'll know what this sort of feature is like. I've done it for years in the mags. We're gonna put it to you guys now, and we've come to this beautiful lake. This is on the Packington Estate. It's got a bit of a funny name, I have to say this one. It's called Cox Close. Now, you can decide. I'm thinking that's about chickens myself. But we're out here today. The water is blue, so this is one of the really interesting things that I want to look at. I've not dived properly in a lake that's been dyed before, so this has been dyed. Let's have a look at what it looks like underwater. And more to the point, let's put myself and Steve to the test and find out if we're actually doing what we really think we're doing. Right, this is my plot, and I've got to say, I love everything about this peg. It's got all of the things that I look for. It's just, it's a bit of me, this, it really is. For a start, just a nice gentle breeze blowing in. We haven't got a big wind at the moment, but there is a nice gentle breeze blowing in this way. That's gonna do two things. Firstly, that little bit of ripple on the surface means that it's a lot harder for the fish to see out and see us on the bank, particularly in this clear water. And secondly, if there is any food on the surface, be that bugs, flies, stuff falling off trees, floaters, anything like that, it's all gonna start drifting into this corner down here to my right. So win-win on the wind. Secondly, just have a look at the corner behind me. It just screams fish. There's a load of scum right in the bottom end. There's a bit of a dead arm down there. There's two posts in the water. There's a load of trees. It's the sort of place that I can just poke my nose through, see if there's anything around in the margins, feed a spot up and hopefully have a little bit of an opportunity down there as well. So love the look at that. As we go around a little bit over there, there's a gravel slope. Now that's no fishing bank. Uh, there is a gravel slope coming down there and already I've seen one or two fish cruising up and down that margin as well. So that to me is another spot that's well worth looking at. And the other one I want to investigate is a little bit further up the margin with all those overhanging trees. Now in the morning, that's gonna get the sun. In the afternoon, it's gonna get the shade. So it'd be interesting for us to see when the fish like to be up there. Are they going to be there all the way through the course of the day or are they going to be there just morning or just afternoon? That we'll find out and we'll relay that back on again. And then as we come out into open water, just so I'm not hedging my bets completely all the way down there, just by where those ducks are out there, there is a glowing spot and I can see it now, even without the pulleys, I can see a glowing spot out there. It looks like it's a sandy or gravelly hump. We're on a sandy and gravelly pit, so it's going to be that in some way, shape or form. What I don't know is how deep it is. Now, it's glowing quite a lot, so it looks clean. There's a reasonable amount of weed around the outside of it, but that to me looks like another spot that's worth looking at because there is, once again, one or two fish cruising around in this open water. So through the course of the day, that is definitely gonna be somewhere that I'm gonna look at. Elsewhere, I don't know what the bottom's like. It could be weedy, it could be clay on the deck, it could be silt on the deck, I don't know. But I will have a little flick around with a lead, just to have a feel so I know more or less what the plot is like. But already I've sort of narrowed down into my mind where I'm gonna be fishing, and that's gonna be edge, bait in the corner, off the tree line, out in the open water, and I'll flip back and two between those. Right then, I'm just gonna have a little wander in here and have a quick donk, but just on that, it's a big wide open peg first and foremost, and it's quite high. So whilst it gives you a really good opportunity to see loads of stuff, it gives stuff a really good opportunity to see you. And there's a carp just outside there that's already looking a bit edgy just by us walking down here now. But when you're walking into a big open peg, just stick to the edges rather than going in the middle. A little bit of watercraft and it serves you very well indeed. But this looks absolutely magnificent down here at the moment. It's very, very shallow, and then it drops off. Little fringe of weed on it, then it, it looks like it goes to about two foot fringe of weed, then it steps down. And I can see the weed, but also I can see some glowing spots underneath. So I've just had a wander around so I can have a little donk. I could have cast from over there, but I'll make too much disturbance with it. So I'm just gonna really, just little drops down with that. There's a bit of lead. Bit of weed on there. You can see I've just got straightforward lead and an old rig on. And what I want to do is just 
Just have a quick feel down there, swing it out, don't splash it, just drop it on. And that's landed with a really, really nice crack, which is exactly what I thought it might and hoped it might do. So just bouncing it back a bit. And then with the rig on there, if you're just using the leading rod, you wouldn't see what's on the deck. And there's just a tiny little bit of weed, probably inshore too. Really, really fine stuff. So that's not gonna to be too much of a problem for putting a bait on but it does make me think about whether I want to pop it up or not. And I think I might do. You know, when you, when you feel it, it just feels like a crackdown. But I think there's a very fine covering of, of weed on that. Look, there's another bit there, that's a bit longer. That's really, really thin stuff. So that's not going to be a problem, but it just goes to show that even on what looks like a clear spot, there is a bit of weed as well. So I'll have another little feel around there. Bang, right, good crackdown. And then just as a quick depth measure, I'm gonna drop the tip down there. And that's how deep it is. So if I stick it back up, that six foot deep off the end of there, wouldn't have given it that. I'd have thought it would be much shallower than that, but uh, yeah, six foot deep. So that's a brilliant depth just under the rod tip. That felt a bit softer. Yeah, there you go, look, straight away. So rather than leathering a marker float over there and scaring everything off, I've found that there is this light weed on the bottom. So already now a picture in my mind has been formed. Narrow bit going down, gravel, weed fringes on the end of it, dropping steeper onto a very hard bottom, but a little bit of weed in the odd strandy bit on top. Well, I've spent about 20 minutes just trying to get a picture of what's out there. And I'm clipped up, more or less bang on the top. And if you notice the rod tip there, and it gave a nice little crack when it dropped down. So I'm gonna give it a tiny little pull. And it's a really interesting feature that because from the outside looking in, it looks like it's a really, really clean gravel topped bar. Three, four, five, should come up one more. Five and a half, six foot deep. Right, so shallow spit on it is five foot deep. Left hand side, then it seems to drop down and come back up again. It's quite big, it's about the size of a car and a half uh, in length and it drops down I reckon pretty smoothly and pretty quickly down to about 11, 12 foot on either side of it, including the front and back as well. So I'm thinking it's longer than it is wide, but there's been a couple of chucks where I've cast out and I, it, it's landed and the float hasn't come up perfectly clean. And then when I reel the lead in, there's a little bit of silkweed on it and there's also silkweed on the sides of it as well. So although it's a really obvious big feature, Actually, there's loads of traps all over it, so I've got to be really, really careful about where I put my rig. All right, the old goals are a bit much, so I'm gonna to have to go with the old spawn. And this is not exactly what I wanted to do, but I don't think there's any way of getting bait out there, to be honest. So, let's see if we can get it out. There we go. Now, I'm not gonna spawn in the same place. I'm gonna pop the clip in and out because I want that dotted around. You know, what I'm trying to achieve with the catapult or the throwing stick is just a very light scattering of a few baits everywhere. But using the spawn just to fire out a dozen or so baits isn't great because of the weight involved. So, three, in there. Right, let's do a little bit more. See if we can get that out there. Be interesting to see now because that will be about another 50 baits I put out with the spawn. By the time I've done this one more, that's gone miles to the right, but we've pulled it round. That's on the end of the bar. That's okay. Right, first thing I'm going to do is get the rod on that little spot over there on the right hand side. So I'm just going to pop it over onto the margins literally casting on the bank <laughs> that one spooked the coot a bit open the clutch and literally just prop the rod over here against the tree because i don't want to get over there and find that i need more line but that's just knocked over there now i'll wander over and go and place the rig right so i found the lead which actually wasn't a bad cast at all and it's on a loop to loop so it should be pretty straightforward to get out i'm literally just going to slide the lead out the loop pull that one off and then blue peter style I've already got my PVA bag that I made up. This is on a fluorocarbon leader. 
and that's got a loop on it as well so it is simply just a case of passing the loop through one of the things you've got to remember and i've fallen foul of this before is make sure your loop is big enough to get your pva bag through oops and mine of course is because i've just tested it so pop that one through there and i'm literally just fishing loop to loop i'm not going to fish lead core i am fishing fluorocarbon to nylon and that's it that is going to be what's going out there hopefully that's going to sit on top of that little bit of weed i've got some of the bag mix which is tiger nut pellets uh, some tiger nut boilie and some tiger nut bag mix in there as well that's been soaked in sweet tiger liquid uh, so that's going to go in and then over the top as well i've got a little bit of corn there's a can of corn in there and that is going to go in the spoon i like so and i'm just going to wander out there and drop it in exactly the right spot lovely now i want to see where the bubbles come from and then that will have a bit of corn over the top of it as well there we go there's the bubbles and there's the corn bang on top of that 10 central A little bit wider too and then just a little bit more of that that's got to be a bite isn't it got to be a bite okay so it's taken me about half an hour to find a spot that i am not just happy with but really quite happy with it and it's a clay spot and all fish absolutely love clay you get a lot of naturals in there uh, and it's at, right at the bottom of what seems to be like a bar and the right hand side of the bar seems to be quite heavy in weed as you can see i've brought back loads of this stuff um, just checking it with the grappling lead but when i first went out there I just went out there with the normal three and a half ounce lead and uh yeah i thought it was found a spot first cast uh, and it was coming back smooth and i was like yeah no weed whatsoever done a few more casts still had the same conclusion then changed over to a grappling lead and uh, from the first cast i did with that i realized that it was absolutely choked with weed so it just goes to show how important it is to uh, make sure you use the right tools for the job to find out what what you've actually got out there on the bottom of the lake so i've then worked my way to the left of this bar uh, looking at using the far far bank horizon trees to gauge where I'm where I'm keeping the, the leads going in every time then as I've gone to the very left end left hand side of this bar uh, it's just pure gravel no weed on it whatsoever there's a few big what feels like big clumps of gravel or it might just be the prongs on the lead getting caught on it um, and then as I've brought it back down as it falls down this side of the slope um, it's what I call a glassy, classy pullback. It's what everyone really wants to find. Just absolute smooth, no knocks, no bumps. And then when I've retrieved the grappling lead, there's a lovely little bit of clay on the lead. So that is the, the creme de la creme for me. So now I'm just having a few more uh, interrogation casts just to make sure I'm really happy with that spot. I want to know how big it is, how wide, um, how far I've got before we come into this weed. So as I said, there's just loads of this weed um, yeah, and I need to make sure I'm absolutely 100% uh, and then I can start thinking about getting some bait mixed up and out on the spot. So let's get under the water and have a look how accurate we were. And first up, it's my spot. And just look at that, exactly as expected, there is a load of candy floss weed over the top. This filamentous algae is an absolute nightmare to deal with. It really is. It moves around, the fish move it around. It can just cause you all manner of grief. And it, you know, even though that felt like it was a good crackdown, finding that few strands on there has made me fish a pop-up over the top 
which will make a massive difference to my catch rate. If I'm fishing the bottom bait in there, I'd probably lose it. Just look there, we've stopped the frame, just so you can see where the bait is. And there's a few pellets just dotted around it. This is absolutely ideal. You can clear this spot really quickly with the big bed of particles. But the problem is that there's a good chance they'll roll your bait up and your hook bait up within that. And here's a prime example of it. Look, when the fish come in and they move around, you can see how quickly that candy floss weed moves. So that gives you a perfect example of if you want to clear a spot, then spot on it. But if you're fishing on it at the same time, the best thing to do is put individual single baits on so they can come and pick the baits off it. Just look at that. It's all over the place. That would just wreck your presentation. So just swimming around the bar now, you can see here there's a big lump of clay that's been dug out. And that's interesting. You know, you could find that when you cast out. We'll just have a little wander around again. There's a spawn drop and you can see just how tight that spawn drop of pellets is. <laughs> and look at that there. Crayfish. And it's like a badger hole. All the crayfish holes are like this. They love bars. They love to sit in bars and they burrow into the clay or the gravel. And you can see that's where he'll live. He's just shot back in there because of that little cloudy bit. Swan muscle on the left hand side as well. But if you fish a bait anywhere around there, there's a good chance actually that he could probably nick it and take it back down the hole. And I have actually seen that before, would you believe? And just look at that for a brilliant presentation. There's my hook bait. Obviously there's a little bit of thinner weed there so I can feel where it's cracked down. And that bright pink pop up sitting on a reverse combi rig that's just the way to fish over the top of these without any shadow of doubt that's a hundred percent a bite obviously the odd little tension around a few fish looking at what i'm doing and look at that <laughs> would you believe it he's just pooed himself happy days an interesting look he's straight over the top of that solid PVA bag that i've thrown in the deeper water and that's a lovely setup down there but it does look a bit dark and dingy this is the bag that I dropped in off the margins out of that spoon and look that looks absolutely fantastic there. As expected there is a little bit of weed so I was bang on once again and I've got to say I'm really really pleased with the way that I've understood what's going on underwater. Obviously I should do, I spend quite a lot of time under there but having had a little feel around it was clear that there was a little bit of weed around which is why I've put a PVA bag presentation there too. So that is pretty good. Interestingly though, the scattering of bait that I put on that I thought was directly over the top of it isn't. You know, I put it on the bubbles, but look at that, it's a little bit further down. So the bubbles, strangely, haven't come directly up unless it's the case that the bait has rolled down. Being sweet corner wouldn't have thought it would do that, but it isn't directly over the top as I thought it was. So let's have a little wander over now to Steve's and find out what he was like. And just going through the weed there, you can see it's almost to the surface, really, really high up. Then it drops down almost vertically. And this is the bottom of Steve's bar. First thing is you can see the weed drops off perfectly. And there's just a little bit of carpet weed on the bottom there. Very different to mine. And there's his hook bait. You know, every time I see Steve spotting, he is absolutely bang on with it. Really, really nice tight area. But if you remember, he did put quite a lot out. And when you look at that there, it doesn't look that much on the bottom. So once again, I would say that if you do want to put a carpet of bait out, put more than you think. We'll just have a little root down now and have a look at his popped up hook bait there. Just sitting nicely over the top of that weed. So the presentation's lovely. Bit of weed coming up the side of the bar and a nice bit of bait all over there. So the fish are going to come in and pick at that. Now, Steve's using the right method there because that weed doesn't move. That'll It's not like that silkweed that I was fishing over the top of. It doesn't roll as much because this stuff is rooted rather than just sitting on the top. And the presentation there is lovely. You know, if you could be marking it perfectly, you'd want it to be just on that sandy bit by the side. But you know what? That's a bite every single day of the week. This is going to be one of the problems for Steve, though. And there's not a lot you can do to avoid it. You can see there his leader is coming straight up off the bottom and it's going over that hedge of weed. He's fishing really, really accurately just on the back of it, probably three feet on the other side of a really big vertical hedge of weed. He hasn't got any choice. That's what he's got to do. So he's got to compromise against the indication. Then we drop right down to the bottom for his other rod. And there's another hook bait there. Interestingly, it's starting to colour up now because this is when I've been swimming through it and kicking up a little bit of silt. So two of his rods are presented. Sadly, there's the third one. And that's the risk. It's just dropped a little bit short, maybe only a couple of feet, but it's stuck in that weed. Can the fish find it? 
yeah, potentially they can, but they've got to get in there and root it out. So with all of our spots primed and ready to go, it's just a case of settling down for the evening and night's action. And yes, we certainly had a few bites as well. All right then, just have a look at the colors on that. You know, clear water fish are always absolutely stunning. But this thing, just the gold on it, it was amazing. And the fight was incredible as well, watching it come in in that clear water. And this came at six o'clock in the morning off the top of the bar, single pink hit and run. I had been disturbed at four o'clock with the tench, which went back in again, cast it back out, landed lovely on top of the bar. And then this little thing woke me at six o'clock and it is just a brilliant time. You know, first light this time of year is always a good one. And the scrap on it was insane, absolutely insane. Oh, he's gonna flip again. He's an angry male. You can see he's spawned. There's the odd little battle scar on him. And this one is definitely a scrapper and a character fish as well. Thank you, my friend. And that was off the top of the bar. Nothing to report on the other two, other than tench and birds. This one ripped off in the early hours of the morning on the left hand rod and uh, gave me a right good old strap in the weedy waters. And uh, yeah, just goes to prove the presentation was spot on. I had a tench pretty earlier on in the evening. So yeah, I knew the rigs were fishing and presented. And uh, yeah, it didn't take long before this one ripped off. So last night after Rob had been out in the lake, uh, it was clear that what I'd originally thought was out there, where I thought it actually had a really nice clay spot. Uh, in actual fact, it was a little bit of clay further up the gravel hump, uh, and then down on the bottom, it was covered in this sort of light, light weed about so high. Uh, and then coming back, you had about six foot before it came right up onto uh, some real, real long, this horrible stuff, which was gonna give me big problems when it came to line lay. So um, I've managed to get all three rods out there and I've done what I've been doing for most of this year, which is three rods tight on the spot, with a heavily baited mix over the top. And um, once I got all the bait out there and three rods on the spot, uh, I actually had a couple of tents real early on, which was a real good confidence booster for me because it tells me that the rigs were working even though they were presented over that little, uh, light scattering of weed. Uh, so then going into the night, I've then, uh, in the earlier hours of the morning, had that absolute screamer on the left-hander, uh, which has resulted in that lovely small carp. Uh, then this morning, uh, I had a little bit of an occurrence, pulled back and it was solid in the weed with a bream, uh, sorry not a bream, a tench, when I brought it back there's a load of slime on the, on the hook bait. But the good benefit that uh, I realised, or having wound in this morning, was I had all my hook baits still on and uh, it's clear that there's a lot of crayfish in this pool uh, and to, when I was getting a couple of liners and indications last night I really did think oh, I'm going to be plagued by crayfish here and not have any hook baits on and uh, it's not going to go too well. But that's a bonus so maybe that's whether to do with the light scattering the weed that I'm fishing over, who knows, but that's a real bonus. Now I've got two rods recast out there on the money. I have lengthened my uh, wrapping sticks by about four foot just because of how savage that angle is coming off the back of the weed. But it's a happy medium because Although I'm lengthening that, the line's coming down further across the weed, which we'll see from the footage. Um, so it's going right over the top of the baited area in the feeding fish. So you've got to really hit the clip and let it go down right behind that weed to make sure that it's presented. So uh, yeah, hopefully Rob's going to go out there and confirm what I've just thought there. But uh, until then, yeah, fingers crossed. I've just had an absolute ripper off the top of the bar that uh, recast rod again, and this is the one that's doing the damage at the moment. Even though there's loads of silkweed on it, that little single pink bait over the top, whoa, go on. That little si single pink bait on the top of it is definitely attracting fish at the moment. That's, uh, this is the fourth bite off there now. And they do scrap in here, they really do. You can see I'm just on the back wind. I've tightened the clutch up quickly just to get into contact with it. And I always flip the back wind over. I'll just double check that that we can uh, we can play them right now I can give them a little bit of clutch there's a reasonable amount of weed out there and on the last fish that I had first thing this morning it was a proper scrap like I'm talking an absolute proper scrap and this is where it's a little bit traumatic now it's 
there's a bit of weed in this corner. Oh, there's a bit of weed in that corner. And as I was just about to say, he's just about to cross the other rod. So we'll throw him over there for the time being. You can sit there. And this is where it proved difficult last time around. These deep margins with a bit of weed. I'm going to keep that rod tip up. Oh, I can see him there, a little flash in this clear water. It's beautiful seeing him, it really is. Come on. Oh, don't go in there, don't go in there, don't go in there. Oh, come on, nearly there. Tell you what, for small fish, these don't half fight. There's a lot of angry little males around that have been on the dance floor earlier. Oh, come on. He's in. Whoa, yes. Number two. And here he is. And I say a he because it's definitely a he. Proper scrapper. Again. And these pink hit and runs just do the business wherever they go. They really, really do. If there's weed in the water, trust me, people, pink hit and runs are the ones. Balance them over the top of the weed. Bingo is the result. So last night was really, really, really busy. There was all sorts of stuff going on, starting with the right hand rod that was over on the side. It went in beautifully. You know, bag was down in the edge. I was just convinced that was going to be a bite. And then literally just before dark, got picked up by birds, which is quite frankly, an absolute nightmare, isn't it? So I was in a bit of a rush and rather than putting a solid bag back out there, which is what I should have done, I put uh, a, a mesh bag just because I was in a real rush. It was literally just dropping dark. So I've chucked it back over there, stuck a mesh bag on the rig, um, gone out and popped it in with the scoop as I did previously but I've not had any more action on that at all. And I'm just thinking maybe because it was getting dark, maybe because my presentation wasn't that great, maybe because I was using a mesh bag rather than a solid. I think that one is probably caught in weed now, or it's just, there's something wrong with the presentation. I should have had a bite on it. I was convinced that first thing in the morning I was gonna get a bite on that and I've had nothing. So I think by not using a solid bag, I've cocked my chances up on that. And I'm gonna go in and have a look in a minute and find out exactly what's wrong with it. Um, middle rod. Now, middle rod was down the tree line and uh, I've got a bit of a confession. I moved it off that tree line because having seen the underwater footage, there was a bit of a snag down there and I thought I don't want to be fishing too close to that. So I've come away from it onto a bit more of a gravel spot, slightly away from the trees. I put probably 10 spawns of pellets over the top of that. And I was expecting action on that. That's my baited area. That's where I would hope to, to de develop and build that spot. The other two, they're just bite spots from fish that are patrolling through. So I'm trying to intercept, but that one, I'm hoping that it will build up as a spot. Now, I did have a tension currents on there. So I've chucked it back out again. It looks like it was more or less in the right spot, but again, nothing since then. So I'm gonna go out and have a look at that one. The left-hand one is the one that's been doing all the action. So I've had four bites on it in total. Uh, I've had uh, three tench bites and a carp, all off the top of the bar, all on top of that silkweed, which really it just shows that if they're patrolling over the top of it without putting too much bait on there, just enough to prick their interest, a pink bait on a green background really does stand out. So that's the one that's been producing the goods. What I'd like to know now is clearly the presentation is absolutely bang on that long link critically balanced reverse combi rig works so well. I've seen it so many times in that situation. It works so well. What I'd like to see now is how much of that weed has been cleared off by the bites that have been happening on there. You know, hopefully we'll be able to start seeing a bit of gravel and that silkweed will be moved a bit. If it's not, it's not too much of a problem, but the spot should be getting better and better and better.
I absolutely love these features. It's such a good learning curve, both for you guys watching and for us here on the bank as well. And obviously on the bank, we have the advantage of feeling what's happening as well as just seeing it. And we've seen and felt what's gone on through the last little bit of the session. We've got a really interesting part now because this is stick or twist. We've basically got to repeat tonight what we did yesterday, but we've got the advantage of knowing what we know, i.e. we've seen underwater now, are we gonna do it the same? Are we gonna do it differently? And what's changed to make us come to those choices? So I'm gonna go first. And the first thing I'll say is that clearly there's a weather change. Yesterday it was blisteringly, blisteringly hot. Today it's been hot this morning, but actually it's calming down this afternoon. Cloud cover's coming in, you can feel the air pressure dropping and the wind's picking up as well. There's a possibility of a storm tonight, possibility of rain tomorrow, but that would indicate to me that the fish are gonna get on the feed. They already look like they're hungry. They've been traveling around everywhere, but I think they want some grub now. So I'm gonna give them a little bit more. So let's look at, at my spots in particular as well. These three that I've already got out there. Well, the right-hander, the biggest lesson for me was really, I rushed it a bit too much last night and I didn't use a solid PVA bag. If I'd have used a solid, I've caught another fish. Now that fish may have been a tench because clearly something's been feeding over there. Might not necessarily been a carp but I would definitely have had a bite. The fact that I just rushed it a little bit because it was getting dark and thought, oh, I'll be all right with a mesh bag. You know what, that was a mistake on my part. Learning curve now, get a bit more bait out there, put a solid bag, get my presentation right. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna get in the pond and check everything that I've done just to make sure that it is what I now think it is. Middle rod. Again, the lesson learned from that really is a little bit more about accuracy. I do tend to quite like to spread my bait quite wide and put my bait sort of in the same place. I don't fish on a, on a dinner plate very often. And I think really if I'd have done it there, I'd have had more chance of a bite because clearly the bait had gone and clearly there was colored water there. So fish had fed on those pellets, but I was probably a rod length, rod length and a half away from it and I should have been tighter on it. So. I'm gonna do that one a little bit tighter today and see if I can pick a bait up off that. And then as far as the left-hander, you know what? That was absolutely perfect. I haven't put a foot wrong with that really. It's been brilliant. It's clearing itself off. The spot's just getting better and better and better. Admittedly, when I went back out to check it, my rig was a little bit closer than it would normally be. And it felt like it went into slightly deeper water. And that's because I hit the clip a little bit high and it bounced back a little bit. But you know what? I've had four bites off that so far, so I'm not grumbling at all. It's clear that that is right. So I'm just going to repeat the same process there, making sure I'm on top of the bar rather than lower down it. And fingers crossed that'll be a bite or two. But the first thing is, let's get them back in the pond and let's show you guys exactly what it looks like and whether or not I've got it right according to the changes I want to make. Right, well, I'm lined up in that swim on the left-hand side, wrapped at 12 and a half, chuck it out, going well, hit the clip, land it, feel it down, and that felt lovely. That is bang on. I'll be lucky if two made it there. The seagulls are out in force now. Another two. With everything reset, it was back into the pond now to have a look at how things had changed. And just look at that, massive difference straight away. And this is my spot, that gravel bar that had got all of that silkweed on the top of it. 
on the bikes overnight from both the Tench and the Carp had made an enormous difference to what the spot looked like. There it is, my perfect and favourite presentation. Just look at that, absolutely banging sitting on that sand. Reverse combi rig, pink, hit and run pop up over the top of it. And that is just an absolute winner every single day of the week. But the key thing, of course, is the way that I baited around the outside of it Rather than using particles, using individual boilies and small spoms of boilie and pellet, that meant that that spot had been cleaned off beautifully. And look at the difference there. It is absolutely massive in comparison with what it was before. That is becoming a really, really nice spot now. Swan Mussel couldn't see that there before. And now let's move over to the other spot, the spot that I'd found just off the edge of the bar. And you can see straight away that the water is cloudy there. That's me kicking up a little bit of silt that's sitting on the side of the bar, but more to the point, there was actually quite a few fish feeding around that area anyway. So in the daytime, they were just feeding on the side of the bar. You can see my yellow critically balanced pop up there, matching that corn that's just on the side of the bar too. And it does stand out quite well in that deeper, darker water. It's probably about nine, 10 foot deep there as it goes off the side of the bar. And as we come back up, you'll see the light change but also there's slightly more weed right on the top than there is on the side. So it's always worth investigating all the way around these places. Now let's move over to the marginal spot and that is the PVA bag, the solid bag that was dropped in out of that scoop. And you can see that it's spread out quite a little bit. You can see that it's spread out quite a lot and the reason for that is because this is a really, really steep bank and those small pellets have just come out where the bubble of air has burst out and just spread it around. Notice that as well, little clumps of bait sitting up against stones. That's a prime example of fishing on a steep bar and you can't quite see how steep it is here, but believe me, it is really, really steep. You can see there that the bait is just sitting by the side of the lead and the presentation really is very, very nice indeed. I've gone that little bit further out, rather than sitting in the weed itself, having seen what it was like previously, I've just gone that little bit further out, getting away from the danger of that weed to keep the hook point out of the way of getting snagged in it. Line lays much better this time as well. It's sitting that little bit further out away from that weed. And there's no question in my mind that that should produce a bite. It looks really, really good. And that's gonna be a spot that the fish will visit both day and night. So Steve's spot now and you can see straight away that he's using a really tight baited area again and the presentation there once again is very very tight very accurate you can see his hook bait there just sitting beautifully off to the one side of the baited area exactly where you'd want it rather than smack bang in the middle and that weed is still there but it's not as bad as it was previously the fish have been in they flattened it down a reasonable amount they've been rooting a few little spots out and just to the left is where the hedge will be you just see one of the longer strands of weed there but as you look into the baited area you can see the sand through that weed that's where the fish have been in previously and fed and started to clear it off a little bit the same there as well just look at the size of that there is steve's second hook bait that's a little bit closer to the hedge of weed and it's sitting just on the edge of the weed that's been rolled up. Now there's still a very good chance that he'll pick a bite up off that. Not a problem whatsoever as long as he doesn't move it. And there it is just going up over the hedge. And that's the thing that affects the indication. You know, you can get a bite there, but whether or not you'll get any indication back at the other end is something to be seen. Now this is a problem, look. He's cast his third one out while I was there. And that's him just tightening up a little bit. And you've got to be really, really careful tightening up really slowly because it just dragged that lead down that bank a little bit and it dragged the hook point into the weed now it's not serious if the fish comes in and feeds there really well it should be okay but you never know if it's silk weed or if it's a different kind of weed just tightening up really slowly there could have pulled that rig back into the weed mask the hook point and that would prevent getting a bite but again, he's incredibly accurate. There's the first one that we saw. Really, really accurate, matching the hatch, yellow critically balanced bait sitting over the top of a really nice tight bed of particle. With the spots all prepped up beautifully, the rig's perfectly in position. It was a case of chilling out for the evening and the thought of things to come. It was a cracking carp fishing evening and we knew we were gonna get bites. We didn't realize just how quickly they would come though. Come on now. 
And yet again, it was the pink hit and run on the bar that's done the business. Now, there's a thunderstorm due later. I just want to just put this one into the film at the moment. You know, it would have been easy to sack him, but not in the summer when the water temperatures are high and certainly not when there's a thunderstorm around because that's going to be sucking the oxygen out of the water later and the last thing you want when that's going on is a fish in a sack. So, uh, yeah, with lights and everything that we've got these days, we can get decent, whoa, we can get decent shots in the darkness. So when the water's warmer, there's any risk, it's getting straight back in again. Well, I'm in again, and this is off the gravel spot. And that extra bait going in there has really paid off. Feels like it's just a small fish now, but I'm absolutely bushed this morning because it really kicked off last night. And I mean, really kicked off. Uh, I, first bite was on the gravel. Overall, that bait that was put in, come out of that weed, you. And it was, uh, oh, there's a little common, double figure common, this one. And that one was on a yellow hit and run on the deck with a load of pellet around it. Whew, I think I've had enough now. And here's the one I just caught, and I tell you what, he is a real character fish. Just look at that dorsal on him. No forgetting you, mate, little stumpy fins and a real character dorsal fin. Oh, mega. And there is the other one. That's a slightly bigger one. That came off the gravel bar. And as you can see from his shape, another absolutely stunning fight. But just look at the colors, these fish in this water you know, it's clear, it's rich, it's a, just a beautiful lake, it looks fantastic. But that blue dye in it as well, it does make a big difference to their colour. And they're just so rich, golden, black on the top. Absolutely superb. Well, I'm just going to update you on what happened last night. Once I'd got all that bait out, it was clear that the fish were straight on it straight away. So whether that's from the sound, the noise, the scent of the bait, one reason or another, they were straight on it. And uh, yeah, I think it was before the third spawn had even gone in, the fish were in the area looking what's going on. And uh, yeah, they knew that bait was there. After I'd got all that bait out, which was about four kilos, half a bucket, just some uh, monster tiger at 12 millers, uh, some mini tiger nuts, loads of corn and a few like three, four mil halibut pellets. Put all that out there, real nice little tight spot out there. Got the three rods over the top and uh, yeah, just as it was approaching dark, uh, had the first bite, absolute screamer. Uh, unfortunately, I lost that one. Since we've been here, this massive bank of weeds come all the way up to the surface and uh, I've had a couple of problems just bringing them through through that weed and with the smaller ones that I've, I've been catching, uh, they've got soft mouths, so it's just pulling out. Uh, never mind that, but uh, I had another one about another 10 minutes after recasting the same rod, which was the one that was slightly lower down the shelf of that bar. So I'd sort of had a diagonal line, one nearer the top, one halfway down and one at the bottom. So similar to last night where the one that was at the bottom was doing most of the bites. And uh, yeah, before we'd even had a chance to get dinner again, the other rod was away. Um, and it was sort of starting to go a bit crazy now. In a normal situation, I would have uh, brought all three back in, wrapped them up a little bit shorter so I knew they were at the bottom of the bar. Uh, and I think the reason why the one at the bottom was going over the ones that were higher up is because the line's going over this weed, which is to the surface. Uh, the higher the, the rig is up on that bar, the line's coming off the top of the weed and going across. So you've got a line going straight through the swim where all the bait is. So I think the one that's nearer the back of that weed it's got a much better line angle or line lay for the for the fish to come in and feed confidently. So um, yeah, I've, I've not had anything else throughout the night. I would have normally recast and put a bit more bait out, but this is the interesting thing now is Rob, when Rob goes out there, we're going to see what's happened. Now, I think either when I put them back out in the dark, they're either 
fallen a little bit short, been pulled back into the weed. Um, one reason or another, they haven't gone. So something's obviously not out there. I reckon all the bait's gone. But yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what's happened out there. Well, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. It all kicked off literally just after I got into bed. Uh, about half 11 was the first bite on the top of the bar, pink one. Off it goes, absolute perler. And that was the one that you've just seen. The really, really long koi, mega scrap on it. Beautiful fish over the moon with that one. And then about half past 12, the middle rod went. So I've put the, uh, I've put the single pink hit and run pop up back over the top of the bar. On top of that, I'd put a few spawns of halibut pellets, just six and eight mil halibut pellets, just very loose over the top. And again, I'm not baiting that heavy. What I want to do is just fish to come in, pick the odd little thing up rather than feeding in a concentrated manner. And just with their fin action, just clear the top of that bar off to make it easy for me to present. So it'll be interesting going out now, having had, I think, three bites off that through the course of the night. It'll be interesting to see just how clear that is again. The real good one for me though, was my twist option from yesterday because that corner didn't do anything. So I came out and I found the gravel, which is the middle rod. Now, this time yesterday, obviously I'd not had a sniff uh, on that middle rod. It was only the left-hander. Yeah, so I put spod mix over that middle rod, uh, sweet pulses and particles, just the this, this spod mix there. One jar of that, jar of hemp, a uh, bit of corn, a few boilies as well. I was putting Crave and a few red ammos in there as well. And I love just dotting the odd red ammo in just to have the odd little pink bait in there too. And then also my favorite as we come into this time of year, and that is halibut pellets. So load of those in as well. I put a bucket in, I would say probably three kilos in total, uh, just dotted around relatively tight and then bait over the top of it. And then that kicked in after midnight as well. And that just kept going. So I think through the course of the night, uh, I had three carp, uh, one carp fell off, unfortunately, uh, attention, I also got harassed by a bird. Interestingly though, the right hand rod, absolutely nothing. And that's the one that I was convinced at the beginning of the session was gonna be the banker. You know, there's fish moving up down that margins, we've seen them, they were still doing it yesterday, but I've had nothing on there at all. Now, something is clearly wrong down there. The spot looks brilliant. You've seen the presentation already. It looked absolutely bang on. Whether a bird has picked it up and rolled it down, or whether the line leg's wrong, or whether the fish aren't visiting it because there were so many birds over the top of there, I really don't know. But I'm gonna get the rig on now, get in the water. Let's have a look at what bait is left. And I'm gonna hazard a guess that there's no bait on top of the bar, and there's gonna be a lot less weed again. It's gonna be almost clear polished gravel. On the middle one, on the stones, there's gonna be no bait again, and it's gonna be slightly polished. We'll be able to see where they've been, but that's a lot deeper, so it's gonna be slightly different down there. And then on the right-hander, quite frankly, I haven't got a clue. I suspect the rig's gonna be in weed. I've been picked up and dropped in somewhere nasty, and I've not really known about it. It'll also be really interesting to go over to Steve as well, because Steve's had an interesting night, and also an interesting morning. So let's have a look at Steve's spot first, and you can see straight away that it's clearing off really, really well big patch of sand there at the bottom of the bar that's where a lot of his bait was and then when we look up the bar where he'd put his really tight bed it's clearing off nicely not quite as quick as the candy floss weed that I've got but it's a completely different type of weed this is rooted but they are going through it they are making a really nice little clear spot in there and that will just develop over time so looking there you could just see the lead free leader of Steve's He's cast a little bit further up the bar then than they had previously and it's sitting towards the top of it. It looks like it's really well presented but the big question for me is that all of the bait has gone from everywhere. There isn't a grain of it. Why hasn't his hook bait been taken? Clearly something's wrong here. Let's just have a look at it now. You can see beautiful presentation but it's just caught in the weed. That hook point on the Ronnie rig has just got caught up in the weed. Now the big question is how and why has that happened? You can see there now it's free, really, really simple, but just look a little bit closer and you can see where the lead has ploughed a furrow as it's been pulled back. So when he was tightening up, it's just dragged his hook point back and it's got caught in the weed. And that simple action of just tightening up too much has caused him a problem and the fish couldn't pick the bait up. Now, in addition to that, you can see there the lead free leader is high in the air and that also might have an effect on the way the fish feed. Reality is, they were feeding clearly confidently because there is absolutely no bait anywhere at all. 
and it was the simple fact that he tightened up just that little bit too much that caused him the problem. Let's have a look at my spot now and this is coming over the top of my really weedy bar and again just look at the difference there. Picture what it was like right at the beginning of the session and it was absolutely smothered in weed. Look at it now, it's brilliant, really clearing off, lovely. And once again, there's my favourite presentation. Absolutely superb. Interesting, no bait anywhere at all. I caught quite a few fish, had a few bites off that through the course of the night. Uh, this was a recent recast and I suspect that at some stage that would have gone anyway because the fish have been passing back and to over this but that spot is just getting better and better and better there's the swan mussel that we couldn't see and then could see so my accuracy is absolutely bang on fishing in the same sort of area all the time and the tench is still loitering round it's been a case of carp and tench all the way through the session but the tench is still loitering round particularly on that slightly deeper area this is off the side of the bar now they're comfortable down there where the water's just a little bit more coloured and there's been more tension coming from that spot than there has off the top spot through the course of light hours. Bear in mind it gets light very early. And there's my hook bait. Perfect presentation. And I'm convinced that if I wasn't in the water swimming around with them that at some stage very soon I'd have a bite as well. Absolutely perfect presentation on both rods. And I caught fish through the course of the night on both rods consistently and continually and this is going down the spot right from the top you can see the water is very very clear here completely different to the color of the water that I've just been in it's a lot shallower obviously it's about seven foot deep here and there's not a lot of bait around bearing in mind how much bait was there there really isn't that much at all there it's been cleaned off it's been polished in fact all of those little filamentous strands they've been moved off there's my rig and there's my hook look at that that's why I've not caught anything something's actually nailed me bait and I got dived on by a coot or two through the course of the night I thought I'd been picked up and dropped actually what they've done is they've picked it up they've nicked the boilie and I've been fishing with a bear hook all night now how's your luck with that 100% I'd have caught fish on that because there's no bait there anywhere at all now I'm gonna ask you something now and that something is what are the three top tips that you've picked up from this both on your own spot and also seeing my things but primarily on your own what are the top three lessons you've learned well number one as always which i think we always touch on and every every single time we do one of these is more bait you you never got as much bait as what you think you've got out there no 100 um, percent. yeah and it, it just goes to prove and that they're, they're coming to it and eating it a lot quicker than what you would think yeah, yeah. um number two it's actually an interesting one uh, sort of found by mistake was uh that when I, I had, or had to start off with, I had all three with a sort of shock leader slash snag leader because there is a lot of weed and a few bars yeah, yeah. about. Yeah. Um, but last night I put one out without it. And interestingly, when you've just gone out there now, uh, and I did feel like last night it went down incredibly quick and felt like it went a lot further, was that um, without that two rod lengths or so of, of snag leader, it's actually uh, the stretch has increased on that rod so it's ended up going over the back of the bar yes and it's interesting that, that that's only due to you know two rod lengths of snag leader yeah 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 so, it is really interesting that isn't it because it was other than that it's identical the, the setup and the cast was the same and the wrap was the same yeah it? so uh, yeah probably moving on to the third one is Good point, um, that. on on the line layer I knew from the start that that was going to be an issue yeah um, and it, uh, that actually fishing right off the front of it rather than up the back because it although it's coming down at a more uh, aggressive angle it's uh, not coming into contact with the fish as much so yeah, yeah. Um, even where you are fishing a spot where you think you've got terrible line layers make sure you um, really interrogate with the leading rod and work out what is your best possible line lay to the spot yeah i think so there's there's a compromise i've seen this loads of times where you're fishing over the back of what a class as a hedge and you know just just out in front of you there you've got that big big bank of weed clearly draws fish in and then there's a bar just behind it the gap in between is a lovely place but your line lay is going to be always going to be difficult yeah uh, there if you've got the top it's it's smack bang in the drop zone if you've got the bottom literally you're doing that going through and your indication is going to be poor but the way you set your rigs up it was interesting that the bites were, were more positive at the bottom. Yeah, I, I felt like that was going to be the case. So, um, you know, we hadn't put the drone up at the start, but having yeah. done that for the filming uh, prior or afterwards, sorry, um, 
you could actually see that there was a bit of a sort of natural channel that the fish were using coming from this weed city to my left and in the front that actually comes down there and it just looked like it and it felt like with that little bit of depth there about five six foot yeah, it just yeah. felt like a natural place that the fish would want to yeah. feed and you know clearly they did last night was a bit mad it's you know it's such a shame that these things happen what happened to you last night happened to me the night before it was a bit crazy just as it got dark and as a result you know it's very hard to reset from there um Mine's been a very different session to yours, obviously. Uh, the thing that I'm most pleased with is how I baited on top of that bar. Yeah. Because it would have been easy to either put nothing in, in which case it wouldn't have cleared it, or pile loads in, in which case I'd have caused myself more problems. Yeah, I have to commend you on that one, Rob, because uh, if, I, if that would have been me in that spot, I probably would have put a lot of bait in, and yeah. it, it could have ended, I probably would have ended up getting a lot of silkweed caught on the rig, but the way you just put a light scatter and a bait on that yeah. worked really well to clean that off and develop that yeah. as a spot. Turn it up slowly, you know, that it's clearly a spot that fish are going to be travelling back and to from, or over the top of, that, you know, and it's, it's just been really, really consistent. Um, the, the other thing is, I'm just going to reiterate your point. And guys, if, if you fish this syndicate, this is the Packington Estate, uh, and this is Cox Close Lake. If you fish this place, firstly, what a beautiful place. You're incredibly lucky. But secondly, bait for me is, is, is the answer. Yeah. Without any shadow of doubt. These are bait fish. Uh, how much have you put in in total? I've, I've probably done just over a bucket. Um, and if, if we've been treating this like an What's that kilos wise? Kilo wise, say eight to 10 kilos. Eight to 10 kilos. Bearing in mind, we've been fishing 36 hours. And half of the time we've been out the water filming and, and, and swimming around and doing other bits and bobs. So it's not an effective hardcore 36 hours. Effectively, it's two quick overnighters, isn't yeah. it? So he's used eight to 10 kilos. I've used a bit less. I've probably used four kilos because I've only got one rod that, that I'm putting a lot of bait around. Uh, but the answer for me without any shadow of doubt is bait and you, did, as is you always didn't, the didn't case. find a single grain of anything out nothing there. anywhere yeah. no, nothing no, nothing on yours you know and you put all of that and Maybe little got, particles as well and yeah they, all of it's gone they're coming in very quickly and absolutely demolishing it yeah. all aren't they hopefully if you've got this far through the film you'll have seen everything at the beginning of it so you know how much he's put out you know how much i've put out as well there is nothing anywhere not one grain of hemp to be found all the spots are polished clean nothing zip zero um, what I would have done, and this is where the fishing situation is slightly different, if we were fishing rather than just doing this testing and experimenting, I'm sure you'd have put more bait in, yeah. I'm sure you'd have recast, I would have done exactly the same. Um, but the, 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 the other thing for me is, and it's, I've been doing this a long time, remember that, I've been doing it a long, long time. Sometimes I forget things because there's so much information that it's easy to gloss over things. Sometimes I think we're all guilty of taking things for granted. And the thing that I think has just really reiterated a point for me is that if you think you should have had a bite and you haven't, recast. Definitely. Just recast, you know, so number one, more bait. Number two, take it steady. It isn't just a case of piling it all in. It's, it's develop your spot, try and read your swim a little bit more uh, and see how that goes. But, but number three, if you think you should have had a bite, then, you know, just chuck it back out there again. We couldn't because no, yeah. of the way that we're doing these it's experiments. It's just an experiment. You want to work out and gain right. from it so we can do the game better next time. But yeah. if I may add a fourth cheeky one in, oh, go on. going back right to the start when I was trying to find my spot, I actually thought I'd found the perfect spot. Just I, sp I spent a good 40 minutes with the leading rod, really yeah. trying to interrogate the swim because there is a lot of weed about. Um, but I've, just with a normal lead, I thought I'd had a super clean pullback and I thought that's the one. And uh, it was, it, I always put a grappling lead on afterwards just to give yeah. it that double check, but it just reiterates the fact that with a normal lead, you can think you're on gravel, yeah. and in actual fact, you've got so so high weed. 100%. I think, you know, the, the people people neglect the marker float, they're not overly bothered about depth. As long as they think they're getting a crackdown, they neglect the grappler, yeah. because they think if they've got a crackdown, it's absolutely fine, and that, that silkweed is a prime example of that. You know, and the other thing that I always do, actually, is I test with the rig as well, because yeah. the grappler's one thing, but it's heavy, it's dragging through. That doesn't reflect what you're doing in a fishing situation. So go back old school. When, you, when you've turned a hook point on a rig, don't throw it away, keep it. And just when you're about to start your session, just cast it out a couple of times, let it settle as if you would do with a normal rig. That's it. Put your bait on as you would do, and then just lift it back off and see what's on there, because so often that will give you a clue as to what the bottom's like. But mate, it's been an incredibly enjoyable session. Yes, I've learned absolute loads, and I hope you guys have as well. Absolutely, we'll be back again, of course, with another 
understanding underwater very, very soon. Look out for the lives, look out for the Facebook page, give us both a follow on our personal and the Dynamite and Carp Spirit pages. Loads of information. And if there's anything specific that you want to know, just let us know. And if we get the chance, we'll look into it and see if we can report back for you.